Joe Redwine, thank you for a $5 super chat. QAV V2 analog build past the smoke stopper beta flight isn't recognizing the flight controller. Is this a driver issue? Windows 11, good cable. So we'll take your word for it that this is a USB cable that passes data. Not all USB cables pass data. Some of them are made just for charging your phone. And if you've got a USB cable that came with a phone charger or came with a phone, uh, then chances are that it doesn't pass data and that's why it won't connect to the flight controller. But you're saying that's not what's happening. So I'll take your word for it that it's a good cable. Like you've tested the cable with a different flight controller and it works. So you know the cable is good. Um, if any flight controller works, then the drivers are good because they all use the same drivers. Except that's not exactly true because like there's flight controllers out there that use the, um, not the STM32 chip, but the AM32 chip. Like uh, there are these new budget flight controllers, with the AM32 chip in them, and those uh, require different drivers than the STM32. So without knowing what flight controller you have, and I understand the Super Chat only gives you so many t characters to play with. Without knowing your flight controller, it's impossible to say, but uh, that's one thing I would look at. Is it an AM32 flight controller? And do you need to download the AM32 drivers? That could AT32. be AT32. AT32. Oh, yeah, AM32 is the uh, ESC firmware. Thank you, Blunty. AT32. So look at your flight controller uh, product page and see if it's an AT32. Just um, run Impulse RC driver fixer. That's what I would say. I mean, that's here's the thing about that. I know people do that reflexively, but the Impulse RC driver fixer fixes DFU mode. So that shouldn't affect your ability to connect. Although I've seen at least one case where it did, and I yeah. didn't, I don't like it. <laughs> um, it's not a bad idea, though. Download and run the Impulse RC driver fixer and see if it fixes it. Um, I think that that's more likely to be an issue if you're trying to flash than if you're trying to connect, but it's not out of the question. Yeah, and then and you then, could. Yeah, go ahead. I'll just say then it starts to get complicated because if you have a good cable and it's not showing up in beta flight, then you sort of need to go down the driver uh, route. Like you need to look in Device Manager to see what it's showing up as, and then yeah. sort of follow like, does that it, pathway. Does it power up at all, or does it just stay right. down? So well, Joe Redwine says it's the Stax flight controller from the Joshua Bardwell budget build. In that case, it is STM32, and you, the Windows drivers should just well. Have you, Joe, have you ever connected a flight controller to the computer before? Have you installed the STM32 virtual COM port driver? If not, that could be why. Um, um, he hasn't. Oh, so you're just brand new. Okay, Joe, here's what I'm going to suggest you do. I want you, so this is linked in the build tutorial, but it's like, it's not actually a video in the build tutorial, so it's possible it was overlooked. It's possible you missed it. So what I want you to do Betaflight is, is I want you to go to this video, Betaflight 4.3, install flash, setup tab, complete walkthrough part one. Just search YouTube for that title. And in this video, there is... Download and install Betaflight Configurator, first time configurator setup, and there better be instructions in there to download the drivers. Yeah, STM32 Virtual COM port driver. Is my OneDrive still working? Apparently not. Um, so you probably need to download and install this driver and instructions for how to do that are in this video, okay? Okay, that's most likely what's gone wrong. Now you only need to do that once, but once you do that, then it should work. Joe Wedwine says device manager shows unknown USB device. Yeah, that suggests that you don't have the driver installed. Will it, Blunty, if he downloads the Impulse RC driver fixer, will it install the driver for him or will it only replace the driver if the driver's already installed? Do you know the answer? No, I'm, pretty I sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will detect it and install it. And it will grab oh. anything that's an STM32 and it will just do its business. That's my oh. understanding of what happens, but that okay. may be incorrect. Well, it's worth trying, Joe. Download the Impulse RC driver fixer, run that app, and plug your flight controller in. Does he need to plug it in in DFU mode? No. 
Fuck me. If you plug it in in normal mode, it'll kick it into DFU, I think. Like, and install the STM32 loader. But my understanding is that it will still grab it anyway. But if he yeah. says it's not picking it up, then, uh, and it is showing up in Device Manager and it's not picking it up, then I would install what you said, the, yeah. the VCP. Okay, the takeaway is, he says Impulse RC Driver Fixer didn't detect the flight controller. I think you got to install the STM32 virtual com port driver, which you can download from that video that I showed you. That's what, that would be my recommendation. Thank you for the super chat and good luck with the build. Um, ceramic versus scrap wire ELRS antenna, which is better? Um, uh, so you're asking if you have like an EP2 style receiver with a ceramic antenna. Here, let's pull it up. We've got an, an antenna like this, like the Radio Master RP2. And this little thing here, this is a ceramic antenna. I don't know the exact structure of it, but it's basically, this is the antenna, this wire trace, and it spirals around, okay? Um, and the thing is that that antenna will have worse performance than a wire antenna. The exact degree of performance loss, I mean, it's like at least like 3 or 4 dB, um, and it may be more. It depends a lot on where the receiver is placed inside the quadcopter, because of course the whole point of this is that you can just place this, you don't have to mount an antenna, it's completely self-contained. And if you put that on a tiny whoop, where it's just sitting there and there's no frame or anything, then it just doesn't really matter. But if you put that inside the carbon fiber frame of like a five inch quadcopter, then it's gonna see some reduction in range because of course the carbon fiber is going to absorb the signal. And some people say, well, well, I'll just put it on the outside of the frame, well, in which case it will just get destroyed, right? So if you care about range and penetration, you're not gonna use one of these, although you can still get very good range and penetration off a of ceramic antenna because Express LRS is just amazing. You may just have to use a little bit more output power, or you may have to reduce your packet rate a little bit to get your range back up where you need it to be. But a wire antenna is always going to be better as long as the wire is tuned to the correct length, because uh, you know a wire antenna is going to be just going to get more. The, the ceramic antenna is inherently I don't know if efficiency is the exact right word, but it's inherently just a little bit worse. T. Joe says I'm planning on building a chase rig for slower cars. Probably run cam thumb. Should I go five inch or seven inch and what battery? Um, at, at the speeds you're talking about, either five inch or seven inch could work. You absolutely will get longer flight times off a of seven inch. Um, so a lot of people chase drift cars with a five inch and it works really well. Uh, the agility really makes a lot of sense when the car is changing direction often as drift cars do. Um, but boy, the flight time on a seven inch is going to beat the pants off a five inch. So it's a question of how more a question of how much agility do you need and how how often do you want to change your battery? You know, with a five inch, uh, you're going to be changing your battery every three minutes. With a seven inch, it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, I also would be tempted to build a seven inch with a Medlin gimbal, M E D L I N. It's a gimbal that lets the camera look up and down. And for car chasing, it's really good because you can kind of slow down and look down and you can look up and change your up tilt while you're flying. I think it's pretty freaking cool. Sunshine says they built a six inch chase quad and it's perfect. Yeah, split the difference. 